Sister Yvonne for that prayer. And at this point, I once again, am going to invite Dr. Blake to come and bless us. We have really been blessed throughout this week and are truly, truly thankful. Sister, the floor is yours. God's children are waiting to hear you. Praise the Lord and thank you so much, Sister and the uh, Bitter B. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> thank you. You've been a gracious, gracious host all week. And I want you to know how much I really appreciate you. I'm glad we were able to work together this week. Praise be to God again. Thank you. I want to also take this opportunity to express my gratitude indeed to the administrators of this union, to um, especially our elder um, um, Binga, I think it is. Um, for extending the invitation to share um, with the saints of God in South Africa this particular week. I, I want you to know, um, saints, your elder was very um, uh, determined, I should say, um, to um, have me to speak this week. I could not refuse the goodly elder, but I want to thank you, thank our elder for coordinating, for working through the process, and I have been blessed, and I'm trusting that there will be another time when I'll be able to give um, some more time to you with greater attention. This week was kind of crazy for me, but I'm so glad, I'm so glad I was able to share this. I tell you this, I'm supposed to be on vacation and I've been using all my vacation time. <laughs> and what better way to spend your vacation than to uh, uh, um, sharing it with the people of God in prayer. I tell you, delighting in God, um, in, in communion with God, that's the awesomeness of ministry. Amen, somebody. Let me pray as we jump into this message. Father, we bless you. You have granted unto us a wonderful sitting, and I thank you for the privilege to share with your people. So tonight again, I this morning rather, I pray that your blessings will be up on all of us. Be with your people on this beautiful Sabbath morning, dear God. Let your will be done. Speak through me to us and let your name be glorified. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I have to say happy Sabbath to the saints of God. May you have a wonderful Sabbath blessing. Now, we've been talking uh, for the last um, six nights now, the seventh night, um, or six days and mornings for you. Um, for me, it's the seventh morning. Since, um, since uh, for you, it's the seventh morning. For me, it's the seventh night. Um, since I must be tired. You can tell that I'm tired. <laughs> since we have been going through um, this awesome uh, 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 presentation of talking about the awesomeness of God. We began with Isaiah 53 and God's divine grace um, extended to humanity and how God is moved um, to heal and to bless and the assurance we have that by the stripes of God, by the wounds that was made upon him, by the sacrifice, by what he did for us, we are rescued. We are healed from the power of sin. None of us need to leave here uh, uh, from this week of believing that we are not um, saved or that we are beyond the help of God. God has given everything, emptied all of heaven in order to save us. And as someone once said, if you were the only person on earth, he would have still come to die for you. That's how much he loves you. You are special and, and he wants to save you at any cost. And, and so I trust no matter where you've been, no matter what you have done, know that you have a God who has laid out his life, given everything, made every sacrifice just to save you. Amen. Let nothing keep you back from surrendering your all, for giving your all to Jesus. And so I say, before I even do my, my, my session, I'm appealing to you, if you have not yet surrendered your heart to Jesus, if you have not yet given him yourself and have been baptized, accepted the truth as it is in Jesus, you need to do so. There is no time to wait for delay spells danger. Yes. If you must walk with him and you've walked away, you need to return home for there's no other place to be than in the safety of the arms of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 
The call has gone out to you. You need to return home. So tonight, there's no excuse. You have absolutely no excuse. Now to be where you're supposed to be in the arms of Jesus, in the relationship with him. And so with that, I, I, I was saying this week for the last few um, evenings, I went into the book of Luke um, and we spoke a little bit about prayer. And um, I was talking about three different aspects of prayer. And so I mentioned um, on Wednesday night, I believe it is, um, communion, um, communion, spending time with God, right? Delighting in God's presence. That's the first aspect, the foundational aspect of prayer. If the communion with God is missing, if you are not delighting with God in God, if you are not enjoying the presence of God, if you are not coming to prayer because you desire to be with him, then something is amiss and you've got to search yourself because the problem is not God. The problem always is with us, right? And so that's the foundational aspect of prayer. If it's missing, then everything else is, is, is um, disjointed. And so the second part is um, intercession, the second aspect. So prayer has three aspects. So the first aspect is communion, right? And the second one I mentioned last night is intercession. That's the go between, that's seeking God for uh, 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 God's mercy for others, right? And so communion, you recognize, focuses on God and intercession focuses on, on, on others. So what about me? What, what, what focus um, on myself, you know, because we need to talk to God for ourselves too, right? Yes, we do. And so um, in, in talking about intercession last night, it was a few things I wanted to bring to your attention. And I'm hoping I'm not going to take much time tonight, um, even though I have a few things that I need to get done. Um, so Ephesians chapter six tells us, right, that um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We, we are wrestling against the devil. There's a wicked force. There's a wicked demon out there um, who is fighting against the people of God. And and so intercession, as I mentioned, is a battle because you're standing between the person you are interceding for and, and, and representing that person um, to God. But also remember, because the enemy is determined to destroy the person you are interceding for, you are therefore standing between the evil one, mercy, and um, the person you are interceding for. So I'm hoping you are catching it. So, so while, while the intercede, intercessor rather is interceding, you've got to understand that the devil is not sitting doing nothing. He's not sitting still. The devil is always trying to do something, roaring lion, moving around, seeking whom he may devour. So the devil is always firing shots. Mm -hmm. He's always firing uh, darts. The Bible talks about the fiery darts of the enemy. And so he's firing those darts in order to take out the person that is being prayed for, the person you are interceding for. Um, he, he, the enemy is trying to destroy the person before God's mercy can reach to deliver and cover that person, right? So remember, if you're therefore standing in the gap between God and man um, through prayer, the devil is firing darts at the sinner. It means that you will get caught in the crossfire. If the devil is going after the person you are interceding for, you are praying for them, you are going to get caught. Um, caught in crossfire. Shots are going to get at you. That is why I'm saying you are in a battle, right? So intercession therefore places you in the direct line of fire. What am I saying is that when the enemy goes after the person that you are interceding for, the wrath of the enemy will come against you because he doesn't like you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you've got to, you've got to understand that, that in order for you to be an intercessor, not only do you need to have the first aspect of prayer down packed, you need to have that communion uh, well with God, you know, but, but you also need to understand you need to love the person you are praying for. So your communion with God must be real, must be genuine. Your relationship must be uh, um, strong, but you also need to have a real love for the person you are interceding for because you cannot mm -hmm. intercede for somebody you do not love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Because you are going to be taking shots from the enemy. The devil is going to come after you. And let me tell you, when the devils come after you, you know, if you do not love the person you are praying for, you're going to want to give up because you are going to be facing some trials. You're going to be facing some difficulties. He will come at you in different ways from different points, you know, so you're not going to be taking shots or going through difficulties or, you know, enduring trials for somebody you don't love, you know, so when you're praying for your child or you're praying for your spouse or you're praying for your coworker, you're praying for your community, you will find that sometimes the more you're pray the worse the battle gets you may find sometimes that the very person you are praying for may be the very person who is coming at you who is trying to hurt you have you ever noticed that for some parents you're praying for your child and you find out that your child become more vicious against you while you're interceding you're praying for that spouse and it, it, the more you pray for your spouse the more you pray for your marriage the worse things seem to get that husband that wife seems to be coming at you it's like an enemy you're living or sleeping with the enemy you know what i'm saying the more you pray the devil will use even the very person you are praying for you're interceding for uh, to bring pain into your life right you'll find that they'll come at you with a vengeance but the reality is it is not the person it is not the person right remember the issue it's not a flesh and blood battle we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There is a wicked devil that is inciting the person that you are praying for uh, to come against you. And you would be, and that is because the enemy wants to discourage you from praying. But because you love the person and you are so connected with God and you understand the heart of God, that God desires to save the person you're praying for, you know that you can't stop praying. So in spite of the struggle, in spite of the difficulty, no matter what, don't stop praying praying don't give up because the enemy would desire nothing more than for you to than for you to start praying no matter how hot the battle gets no matter how difficult the challenge may be even if the person you're praying for gets worse and worse you stay on your knee you continue to intercede you continue to cry out for god for the battle must be won and it cannot yes. be won without your prayer it will be won as long as you continue to pray by the power of the almighty god remember the battle is not yours and remember, you are not battling against a flesh, a blood, a flesh and blood rather against a person. The battle is against principalities and powers. Mm -hmm. Together, I pray that Amen. you got one. Amen. Amen. All right. So don't let the devil discourage you um, to start praying for your loved one. Don't, don't, no matter how bad the situation may seem and how worse things may seem to be getting, you continue to pray. The worse things get, the more you ought to be praying. Um, don't stop. Intercession is more than just a prayer. Intercession is a spiritual act. Intercession is a spiritual battle. So here is it. The delight of prayer is found in communion, but the duty of prayer is found in intercession. So we delight through communion and we do our duties through intercession. Mm -hmm. So we this brings us to the third aspect of prayer. And so all of this combined make prayer what it ought to be. So the third aspect is petition, petition, right? So this is where um, it becomes about us. So communion is about God getting to know him, delighting within in his presence. Intercession is about others, seeking God's mercy for others. Petition is where we now come and say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need bread on my table. Lord, I need you to take care of this situation for me, my bills, my son, and so forth and so on. It is about us, right? The word petition, as a matter of fact, is a legal term right? A petition is usually addressed to a person in authority who can do something about what is being asked. So when you make a petition, you're making it to a person who has the ability to grant you what you are asking, right? A, a, a petition is like appealing to a judge. You know, you have a, a, a court case and you're making an appeal to the judge to give attention um, to your case. And so it is with the Lord. Um, through our prayer, we petition the God of heaven who sits in the courtroom of heaven to give attention to our case and to act on 
on our behalf, right? So the word petition is actually the same word that is used for supplication in Philippians chapter four, six, right? When the Bible said, do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, that's the word, right? It would read, I think the King James Version would read, by prayer and supplication. The word supplication really means petition. So if I were to read it in the New International Version, it would say by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God. So petition really means supplication. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Right. So to make a petition of God, therefore, it is an extraordinary right that has been given to every one of us who are called children of the almighty God. I shout hallelujah that in other words, I can go boldly before the throne of grace and present my supplication because God has given me that right to do so. Hallelujah. How do I know that? The right has been given to me based on the covenant that God made with humanity when Christ died on the cross. That covenant was ratified by the blood of Jesus Christ. It is in the covenant that I receive the right to approach the throne of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So no wonder Jesus said in John chapter 14, 13 and 14, and whatever you ask in my name, that yes. I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything, oh mercy, if you ask anything in my name, Jesus said, mm. I will do it. Why? Because he has given you the right, hallelujah, by the mere fact that he shed his blood for you. He died on Calvary for you. Yes. He has given you the right to approach him. And so he says, whatsoever you ask in his name and understand when you have communion with God, when you intercede for others, you can come to God and you can throw out your own petition because no, your heart is moved by you know, the, the presence and power of the spirit. You are in communion with him and therefore you are your prayers basically are being prayed according to his will. And so he says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah. So you have the right as a child of God to approach God with the uh, burdens, with the concerns, with the challenges that he has placed on your heart and, and, and to present your case, to make your supplication to him. Hmm. Understand while we have this right in Christ, not everyone has a right to make a petition of God. What am I saying? Proverbs chapter 15, I believe it is, Proverbs 15, 29, declares, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. Um, yes, God will not hear some prayers mm -hmm, um, because we, we continue in our sin and we are in rebellion against his will. So not everyone has the right. Um, he came to make all of us sons and daughters, but there are those who have not accepted um, the fathership of God. And so we are out of the fold of safety. Um, Second Chronicles 69 says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. He's specific. I will show myself strong. I will fight for those whose heart is loyal to me. So the right to petition God is for those who are in the covenant relationship. Mm. I, yeah. Yes, that is why, that is why if I were to flip over to Deuteronomy chapter 28, we see um, God giving Moses a message and the message simple was, if you hearken diligently unto these words that I command you these days, this day, then I will cause these blessings to overtake you. You will be the head and never the tail. You'll ride on the high places of life. Your basket will be full and never be empty. You will lend and never borrow. So all these blessings will be yours if yes. you remain in the covenant relationship, mm -hmm. right? 
And so God is willing to work and move and fight for those who are in that covenant relationship. And when you are in that covenant relationship, you are experiencing communion with God through prayer. You're delighting in the presence of God. You're growing in him and with him and, and through him. Yes, God, I know God certainly does um, give um, daily blessings to everyone without prayer. Yes, the Bible said that in Matthew chapter 5, 45, he makes the sun to shine or to rise on the good and the bad, you know, the, the evil and on the good, but he, and he also sends the rain on the just and on the unjust. In other words, there are blessings that God pours out on everybody. People are alive today, good and evil people mm -hmm. are alive. Sinners and Christians are alive today because God gives the gift of life. Um, God put food on the table of everyone. Are you with me? Um, um, sinners yeah. and sinners like and so there are blessings that the lord in his mercy has poured out on all but there are certain things that some people will never get from god mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know if you're not in that covenant relationship with him right those who are living in obedience yeah. God have the right to petition God boldly and confidently. We can boldly come before his throne of grace and obtain the help that we need in our time of need. Uh, when we make a petition, then those who are walking with Christ, those who are experiencing that sweet communion with Christ, I want us to know this morning that when we come to make our petition to Jesus Christ, never make your petition a, a random. You, you, you're not making a random <laughs> petition. You're not making a random request that you pick out yes. of a hat somewhere and just pray anything that comes to your mouth. You've got to learn to be specific with your God. Don't be general all over the place. You've got to come to the place where you don't limit God and narrow down the request. No, you make it big, broad, and deep because your God oh, is yes. big. He's mighty. Spoke worlds into existence out of nothing. You understand me? When we come to God to make our petitions, and make, make our request. We are not making some random request to some random God out there. No, we're talking to the almighty God. Therefore, we must be intentional. Our, our, our request must be intentional, born out of the covenant relationship, a relationship that is grounded in the promises of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so don't come, don't come uncertain. Don't come trying to figure out, will God hear me or will he not hear me? You come boldly before the throne of God's grace. When you are connected, as someone who said, you're wrapped up and tangled up in Jesus. Oh, yes. You're delighting in his presence. Hmm. You are having sweet communion with your king. You can come <laughs> before his throne of grace and you can cry it and say god this is the issue i need you to fix it but listen to me you can choose to do it the way you want to however you choose to do it god i trust you hallelujah somebody mm -hmm. hallelujah listen mm -hmm. we should never 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 come to the place where we are asking god's help or god to do something outside of the covenant promises. You know, James chapter four, verse three tells us, um, we ask amiss, right? We ask selfishly. Um, we do not receive the things that we ask for because we ask selfishly. And so I want to encourage us that effective petitions are made based on the promises of the word of God. So when we make our petitions, we should often open our Bibles. I like to do that. Mm. Look at the promises. I like to yes. put my finger on the promise. God, you said this in the name of your son, Jesus, on the merits of your blood, God, this is your word. This is your promise. And I'm claiming this because yes. you promised it. You know, in the Bible, go through the word and claim that. Listen, I realize that my time is out and I'm going to ask you for a few minutes. Give me about three minutes. I'm taking three minutes out of your time. Last morning. So, <laughs> so, praise God. Thank you so much. So listen, listen, listen. I want to flip back now to Luke and bring uh, this moment to an end. As we bring this prayer section to an end. 
when we go back to Luke chapter 11 that I begin with on, I believe it was um, Tuesday night, I, uh, Tuesday mm -hmm. morning. Um, as we look back on this, right? we look back at the prayer Jesus taught the disciples. This is where we started this section. He said to them, when you pray, say, our uh, father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as, um, it, as in heaven, so in earth. Now, I want you to notice that in this particular prayer, we mm. find one of the greatest petitions recorded in scripture. Thy mm. kingdom come, thy will be done, um, on earth as it is in heaven. In this petition, God, rather Jesus, invited the Father's kingdom to break into the world and assert its rightful place on earth and reorder things according to heaven's way. That's what Jesus was asking when he said that kingdom come. He invited God, he's asking God, he's petitioning heaven to step into this world and rearrange things on earth, reorder things on earth so that things on earth will be in alignment, have mercy mm. with heaven's will. So this yeah. tells me that our petitions should first begin with the cosmic purposes of God. Yeah. Ask God to bring about an alignment with his will, with heaven, earth, with earth, uh, earth things, things on earth to fall in alignment with heaven's will. And when that is so, then as a people, we are able to pray according to God's will. You see, what, what is God's will in heaven? What is God's will? The salvation of mankind. As the general folks, God's desire is to save mankind. Notice something about the prayer of Jesus. Nowhere in the prayer of Jesus, our father's prayer, did you see the word I, me, or my? Hmm. All we see in it is us, we. Give us our daily bread. Forgive yeah. us our debt. Um, as we forgive others. Lead us not. Deliver us. You, you notice that? There's no me, there's no I, there's no my. So our wow. petitions should not be so yeah. self-centered. We ought to pray the cosmic purposes of God. We mm. pray as we seek blessings for ourselves. We are seeking those blessings for those around <laughs> us. So we are not so selfish in our petitions. Amen, somebody. Amen, hallelujah. As we pray these prayers. Let us pray and ask God to allow his will to be accomplished in our lives, in our families, in our churches, in our communities, in mm -hmm. our world. Let us pray the cosmic purposes of God. For in the cosmic purposes of God are the blessings, my blessing, your blessing, our mm -hmm. individual blessings. I mm -hmm. know my time is out and I'm not going to take much of your time. I wish I could finish this, but listen to me, listen to me. Quickly. Let me finish. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, quickly. listen to me quickly. Every Just Christian to pray listen to me quickly every christian is called to pray it is our duty it is our right to talk to god you see a shoemaker makes shoes a baker makes bread and a tailor makes clothes a christian yes. makes prayer that's it hey. that's what we do to make prayer that's what we do we pray are you with me you never see a shoemaker making um, something that is not a shoe. So Christians should not spend their time trying to do something that has nothing to do with God. Are you with me? A Christian yeah. should pray. Yeah. Prayer is the distinguishing mark of the Christian. Prayer is how we constantly surrender to God and invite him into our lives. The Christians who do not spend time in prayer operate from the flesh. That is why so much of the times we see fleshy people in the church, miserable people in the church, fussing and fighting over things that are not eternal because we are not spending time in prayer. We're not communing. We are not interceding. And we are not praying the cosmic purposes of God in our petitions. When we go daily without prayer, we are we're essentially actually cutting off communication with God. And when we cut off communication with God, we can't do anything else but operate in the flesh. Wow. Yes. Christians, we must live, we must live as though our life depends on prayer because mm. it does depend mm. on prayer. Mm. E.M. Bound, and I end with this, Ian Bound states, it is better to let the work go by neglect than to let praying go by neglect. 
whatever affects the intensity of our praying affects the value of our work. When we are too busy to pray, it is not only a sign of our backsliding, it is also a sign that our work is defective because God is left out of it. May God bless us. Mm. May God mm. grant us his peace. We understand that we have power with God and the right to pray our petitions. And it's based on the covenant promises of Jesus Christ. Father, have your way. Change mm. our prayer lives. Mm. Teach us how to spend time in sweet communion how to spend time interceding and yes, making petitions by seeking the cosmic purposes of your kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen.